another little short domestic video of part of my yard, my little neighborhood here. I love this tree. It's an oak. I think it's an oak. Um, yeah, it's so nice now that all the leaves are coming in. It's been kind of a long, cold, lonely winter, little darlings. Yesterday, I treated myself to two hanging baskets. Every spring slash summer, I get hanging baskets, and I try very hard to not kill them, but they add a splash of color to my yard. It kind of matches some of my doodads. This little bent angel here, sleeping baby angel, um, with some cracked wings. I've had him for years and years, but my parakeets that have gone over the rainbow bridge are buried under him. And um, so that's the little budgy memorial rock. And uh, here's my little sitting area up front. I gotta put some flowers in my little red poppy vase there. And yeah, it's just a really, really super small cottage as you can see, but I like it. And you can hear the water rushing over the falls over here. Later on, after I get settled, I'm going to take a walk across the street to the lake and show you that too. Because I'm trying really hard to be more positive these days. And uh, like I said before, it just helped exponentially to talk to a therapist today. I'm so grateful that they got me in um, as early as they could. In the past, I've had nightmare situations with clinics and, um, you know, therapy situations because, whoops, it would be nice if everybody obeyed the stop signs. That would be awesome. Because of just feeling like, you know, really pushed on the back burner and like, oh yeah, well, everybody's having a mental breakdown. Get in line, you know. And then, of course, when you're a former um, substance abuser, when you start mentioning that in the interest of honesty, sometimes they, I don't want to say they use it against you, but it's really complicated when you're dealing with substance abuse and mental illness overlapping or, you know, interwoven, what they call dual diagnosis. I was always amazed in my various um, stints in rehabs that they never, like, let me talk to a shrink or dealt with any kind of um, really cogent, like, therapy. I mean, they, they kind of get you away from the substance and get you integrated into groups. And, you know, you do talk about your feelings and whatnot, but as far as actually being diagnosed with you know, trauma, you know, PTSD, uh, borderline, um, bipolar, all the different things, you know, dissociative identity disorder, ADD, all these things that have been touched upon with me in the past with um, therapists, which I've had to wait sometimes like a year for, even when I've called up in crisis, crying, like, I need to talk to someone. And they're like, well, go to your local ER. And then, you know, one time I was in the ER after um, almost killing myself by drinking too much. Actually, that happened twice. Not deliberate attempts, but just attempts to really erase myself via ETOH, alcohol. Um, all they do is they assess that you're not gonna kill someone else. You know, you're not suicidal or homicidal. And if you say anything that even hints of that, they send you upstairs, as they say, where they pump you full of Thorazine and they wanna send you to like, a, you know, a psych hospital. Um, I don't think I ever really needed a psych hospital or, you know, ECT or anything like that, but I just really needed to talk to people about what I've gone through in my life. And, and I'm not saying that to act like, you know, oh, I've got the market cornered on trauma because I know I don't. But once again, today, when I was talking to Michael, he was very, very much astounded. He, I mean, he kept calling me a survivor and it didn't just seem like, um, a, like a trope he was throwing at me like it seemed like he really I, I'm not trying to impress people with my story or get sympathy or or pity but it's like I just want people to understand why I sometimes feel so broken and confused and overwhelmed and lonely and just like all these things that nobody is immune to but when you're raised in a cult and you have no template of normalcy whatsoever you know nothing that no family structure that looks normal you don't know what normal is you don't really know how to comport yourself in, in the world and in your own life. You're probably wondering why I'm still just fo focusing on flowers and not me, but I don't feel like constantly showing me. I feel like my face gets more bloated by the day. 
Uh, by the way, I didn't wind up having that salad. I had a freaking cheeseburger and sweet potato fries. So yeah, but I barely ate anything the rest of the day. So it's all good. Um, I discussed food issues with the therapist too. And he was like, he just gave me this blank look like, yeah, and wow, you know, you're a lousy person for wanting a cheeseburger on a Friday evening. How very dare you? He goes, what did you used to do on a Friday, Lisa? And I'd be like, well, I get about three, you know, liters of, uh, bourbon or vodka and I'd be drinking for three days straight you know drink the weekend away alone crying writing sad poetry and listening to sad songs and he's he's like well I'd say you're ahead of the game go eat your cheeseburger and enjoy the hell out of it and it's just it's so basic and it's such common sense but like I lose all perspective of of what's just normal or average sometimes when I get really stuck up in my own head and stuck up my own ass as I like to say um so yeah, just wanted to show you some pretty things and ramble on a little bit more. Uh, I got my laundry done. <laughs> the laundry that I've been mentioning like all freaking week. Still haven't gotten a manicure, but guess what? I'm going to save the freaking money now that I've, you know, sold my soul for these hanging plants, which bring me so much joy. Um, I'll do my own nails. Who cares? I mean, yeah, it's Mother's Day, but like my family doesn't judge me on anything. They don't, they don't expect me to... <laughs> show up in like a dress and pearls and you know oh her hair's done her nails done my daughter usually thinks I overdo it anyway she she wouldn't care if I showed up in pajamas we're all just gonna chill out in uh, Steve's yard unless it's raining at which point we'll chill out inside and play with the kids and just you know that we're like a really basic family we we sit around and we eat we talk shit and we watch the kids and usually usually laugh at each other a lot so I like being a casual person um I think the reason I sometimes maybe don't seem that way is because I have a sense of inferiority and insecurity and I, I tend to compete with people, which is really dumb. Another thing that Michael talked to me about today, about um, the trap of getting sucked into competition with people and how, oh my God, I almost wished I, I had taken notes during our session because like he said so many things that were quotable and like, I don't know, he quoted like really cool stuff from the movie Field of Dreams and but I went in there really not expecting to like anybody I, I I almost pulled out of the driveway like what is this crap you know it's but it was so efficient I went in there was like only three people in the waiting room they gave me a ton of shit to fill out I filled it out they wound up taking my insurance um you know they just asked me for a photo ID and some medical health history and they wanted to know my my doctor's name and all that and um my pcp and then we got right to it michael saw me within 15 minutes and then when we were done and he spent like probably an hour and 20 minutes with me which is unheard of usually they rush you right through i've had some therapists in the past that like barely even look up from their notepad or their their computer to even like make eye contact or really connect with you as a person but he sure did and he had some interesting like vocal tics that i found really pleasant because i'm like, you guys know I'm really into sounds and voices, and I've got that whole ASMR thing going. And between the way he spoke and, like, his affirmations and, and the music in the background, I was like, wow, I'm <laughs> I'm getting hypnotized. You know, it, it was so nice. Like, he actually had me laughing at a couple of points and definitely crying, which I needed to do. And he's like, well, that's why the tissues are here. And I have, like, four boxes in my office at any given time. So, um, you know, that's, that's what they're there for. That's what they do. That's their line of work. And, um, so I, I was just so impressed that like, I don't know, I, I called this particular clinic last year and I didn't get callbacks and I didn't get any satisfaction, but this time my neurologist was the one who went to bat for me and she goes, if they can't see you, you let me know and I'm going to get you in there because she knows that my chronic pain also has to do with depression. And the insomnia is um, a sign of bipolar. And uh, I just, I love her so much. I love my neurologist. She's so awesome. I have a lot of female doctors. I think it's great. Almost all my doctors, except my PCP, are female. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to see the psychiatrist um, to see if I need meds or not. I mean, I'm already on Cymbalta, but a very low dose. Not enough to really do anything for depression. It's more for my fibromyalgia. And um, 
I have the Lamictal, but I've been off it for a while because I didn't want to keep staying on it unless I had a new shrink. I shouldn't say shrink, that's disrespectful. A new psychiatrist who could reassess me and prescribe what I need. Um, I don't think I need lithium, but the, the Lamictal has to be closely monitored also, but it might be good for me. I'm not looking for something to be a happy pill or like take all the clouds away, but I want something that's going to make me not feel like I'm such a slave to my moods and that, you know, just exhausting roller coaster ride that's not fun. Um, I don't like roller coasters, never have. Honestly, you couldn't pay me to get on one. But I just want to feel stable and level. I just want to feel like the same person each day and not just be all over the place. And right now I feel calm because I just love that it's Friday night, I'm home, I've got my laundry folded, um, I'm going to make the trifle, which, you know, is a cake that I'm going to bake myself, layered with pudding and um, berries. And I might wind up whipping some cream, but I'll, I'll do that Sunday over there. Um, and just now I went up the street, there's this new tiny little gift shop right up the road from me. It's practically walking distance, but I don't walk. <laughs> so I drove there on my way home. Um, I picked up a gift bag for my daughter. Her name is Leah, by the way. And um, and some little trinkets for her for Mother's Day. And, of course, some little toys for my grand boo-boo, the older one. The little one doesn't really need toys yet, but um, the older one, Luca, just loves cars and trucks and things to bring to the beach. And it's just so fun. Every time he sees me, like, I'm the typical grandma. He, he, oh, he comes up to me and he wraps himself around me and, like, Hi, Gigi in his breathy little voice and oh god I can't wait and tomorrow even though I'm working 14 hours it's going to be an easy gig and I'll take the, the ladies out to lunch I'll take them to the dollar store I know I'm being repetitive and that's it this is way too long holy shit I've been rattling on for almost 13 minutes I'll talk to you guys later you know I will love you peace out